In my new book, Sound Actions, I ask questions about musical instruments. What's the difference between an acoustic grand piano and an air instrument like this? I combine perspectives from embodied music cognition on one side and interactive music systems on the other. And I ask questions about what happens when composers make instruments, when performers write code, perceivers become producers, and the instruments play themselves. I argue that new musicking technologies are radically changing the way music is performed and perceived. In the first part of the book, I present the musicking quadrant as a way to understand the different musical roles of instrument makers, composers, producers, performers, perceivers, and analysts. Then I introduce the embodied music cognition framework and argue how this can be used to understand more about new musicking technologies. Musical instruments are at the core of musical creation and experience. It is a mediator between action and sound. Traditionally, musical instruments have been studied from an object-oriented organology. I call for an embodied organology centered on the interaction with sound-producing objects. The second part of my book explains some key terminology related to embodiment, including the differences between motion, action and gesture. I also explain how the concept of degrees of freedom helps understand both the technical complexity and the cognitive load of various music technologies. This is at the heart of my technocognitive reasoning. Then I move on to describe the differences between sound producing, sound facilitating, sound accompanying and communicative actions. The first ones are closely connected to sound production, while the latter is primarily meant for extra musical communication. Music-related body motion can be represented in many ways. I argue that traditional musical scores are based on action notation. The same is the case for the MIDI standard, which is focused on coding pitch and velocity information on notes. This differs from new standards that allow continuous control of various sonic and musical features. In the third part of my book, I draw up the differences between action sound couplings on one side and action sound mappings on the other. I argue that an action sound coupling is based on the interaction of physical objects. Such couplings can be explained through the laws of mechanics and acoustics. Acoustic musical instruments can be thought of as having varying action sound separation, from embodied on one side to conceptual on the other. A similar action sound separation can be found for action sound mappings. However, in such instruments, the mapping is designed and constructed using controllers, sound engines, and speakers. I argue that many new electroacoustic instruments may confuse both performers and perceivers because they violate basic principles of physical sound interaction. The widespread use of sound amplification is an interesting case of how new technologies can alter our experience of spatial temporality. Passing sound through cables allows for reducing the spatial distance between a performer and a perceiver. But the added latency of new networked music technologies also creates perceptual challenges. In the fourth part of my book, I describe my journey from playing classical piano as a child to exploring various multidimensional keyboard controllers in my research. I describe some of the unconventional instruments I've built over the years, including cheap stick, music balls and the music troll. The aim has been to break with the conventions of music technology designs. I have wanted to develop soft and colorful musical instruments without square corners. More recently, I've been fascinated by the possibilities of air instruments and how it is possible to break all the rules I have presented in the previous chapters. In the Svarm air instruments, I have explored inverse sonic interaction. You create sound by not moving. The self-playing guitars are a meeting point between action sound couplings and mappings. Digital produced sound resonating in physical guitar bodies. My new book describes my journey to become an interdisciplinary scholar. Combining theories and methods from the arts and humanities, the social and natural sciences, and using various design and engineering approaches in my exploration. New musicing technologies bring many exciting opportunities, but
but they also require attention to diversity, accessibility and sustainability. All in all, new instruments change how music is created, performed, perceived and understood. Interested in learning more? Well, take a look at my book.